Now let's discuss about the internal and outstanding elements. Why do we need to know about these elements? Because so based on this elements length and width and thickness, the section has been classified as class 1, class 2, class 3, class 4. Uh, similarly, is there like a plastic, compact, semi-compact and slender sections. This will be important in order to estimate the load carrying capacity of that particular member. So now what is the internal element R to be considered to be supported along two edges. This element also called as stiffened element. That means if any element for example this element if you talk about this element is actually subjected by this flange and this flange. So this is called as internal element internal element. Now, if you talk about the outstand element is actually a outstand element are considered to be supported along one edge and free on the other edge, free on the other edge. This side is free, this side is supported by this web. So, this element is called as outstand element. So, when it comes to the composite section, for example, you take this section, okay. So, now these two webs are considered, so up to this section is called as internal element. What is the outstand element over here? This portion is called as outstand element. Outstand element. So now come to this square or rectangular hollow sections. What are the internal elements? See, we already say that the internal element is nothing but it is supported along two edges. For example, this element, you take this element. This is supported by this, supported by this one and this one. So this also called as internal element. Now again, if you talk about this element, this also supported by this and this. So, this also will be called as a internal element. So, this is called internal. How this can be used? Because if you see in general, this is called, let us say here, this is called actually B and this is called actually a thickness of the member. So, based on this B by T, we can able to find out what is the particular section classification. How these classifications has been defined? As I said, the sections has been defined class 1, class 2, class 3, class 4. Scientifically or engineeringly, this can be classified as plastic, compact, semi-compact, slender based on the behavior of the element. Now, let us discuss about what is the definition or what is the these classes will behave. If you look into the Stestine Karu, any member when you tested laboratory, based on the plastic, compact, semi-compact and slender, the section behave like this. So, what is that? We can go one by one. For the plastic section, it will develop a full plastic movement MP. That means, this is the MP. Full plastic movement will be developed. Let us say, for example, a member, if you start bending a beam, it will form a plastic hinge initially, right? If you keep bending and continue to bending, the hinge will maintain a certain level of strength until complete failure mechanism is formed, is called as a plastic section, until complete failure mechanism. This is called as a plastic section. Plastic section. Now, compact section. It can develop their plastic moment MP. This also will develop the plastic moment. What is that compact section? But allow only limited amount of rotation. The amount, limited amount of the rotation will be up to certain here. That means local buckling of that element will prevent the required rotation. So that means the local buckling of the element will be prevent. So this is this section is called as a compact section. Now, come back to the semi-compact section. The semi-compact section is nothing but local buckling prevents to develop the plastic moment MP. It can only develop yield moment MY. It won't develop the MP. Before even touching the MP, 
the local buckling will prevent in order to achieve the MP, but at least will go up to the yield point of the member. This is called semi compact section. Now come to the slender section. The slender section is nothing but the section are those in which yield in the extreme fibers cannot be attained because of premature local buckling in the elastic range. That means it's not even reaching the elastic range and before it actually fails. That is, is not a yield movement as well, is below the yield movement. That means, let's say for example, we'll take a I section, simple I section, okay. So, if you can see the I section, this section even before it reaches to the yield point, it actually slightly will undergo the buckling of the, for example, web element. So, in reality, in the calculations, the complete sectional properties will not be available because this portion already buckled, locally buckled before even it reaches to the yield point. So, you will be deducting this portion of the section. So, that means the total cross-sectional properties minus this cross-sectional property will be taken into consideration. When it has been deducted, the partial section properties has been taken out and limited section properties are available for that particular section. If you multiply by the stress, you will be getting less movement capacity compared to the semi-compact, compact and plastic. So, in a particular section, if it is a slender, the less movement and go ups, plastic is a higher movement capacity will be there. Now, let's look into the this section properties definitions. What are the definitions we have? So, this is plastic, compact and this one is semi-compact. And this one is slender sections. So now let's go to the section classifications. Class 1 plastic can develop plastic hinge with the rotation capacity required for plastic analysis without any reduction of resistance. So we already discussed there is a internal or outstand element B by T is less than beta 1. So, we will discuss what is the beta 1 in the next slide. Similarly, for compact section or class 2 section can develop the plastic movement resistance but limited rotation capacity due to the local buckling which also we discussed. For class 3 semi-compact can only develop elastic distribution where the extreme fiber stresses can reach yield but local buckling prevents further development of the full plastic movement resistance. So, this is called class 3 section. The slender section develops the local buckling before attainment of the yield. That means we already discussed the local buckling will develop even before it reaches to the yield point of the section. Now, so what is this uh, beta 1 and beta 2 and beta 3? So, IS800 code in table 2 class 3.7.2 and 3.7.4 has been given more in detail about section classifications based on outstand element or internal element. So, if you can see that code book, you can see there is a outstand element and internal element, a web element or angle sections and all those things. So, now there is a plastic section beta 1 is given, compact section beta 2 is given and semi-compact beta 3 is given. So, beyond this limit is called as a slenderness, slender columns which is sorry, slender sections which is called as a class 4 sections as well. So, B by T for example, if you take this example, B by T is less than or equal to 9.4 epsilon. The epsilon is nothing but 250 by Fy with square root, square root of 250 by Fy. So, based on that, the limiting value of the beta 1, beta 2, beta 3 has been given and we need to apply in order to achieve the section classifications. Once you know the section classifications, you multiply appropriate section properties in order to get the strength and movement of the particular section. So, we will see more in detail in the example.